your Kubernetes cluster most probably doesn't run only Apache Kafka, but also many other applications. And all these applications have to share the resources such as memory or CPU. That's why it is important to give them clear boundaries and to make sure that all apps are stable and give you the expected performance. This is something that's important for all apps, not just for Kafka, but our focus will be of course on Kafka. Kubernetes allows you to set resource requests and limits for each container. The requested resources are reserved and will be always available to the container. The limit resources might be available or not. When the node where the pod is running has free resources, the container can use more of them up to the limit. But when the resources are not available, the container will have only the requested resources. And even if the resources were available in the beginning, the node might also need them back, so they should be always used only temporarily and uh, the application needs to be ready to give them back. So, how do the resource requests and limits play with Kafka? With CPU, it is relatively straightforward. The requested CPU should be always available. But the CPU up to the limit might or might not be there. If it is available, Kafka will be able to use it or give it back without any special configuration or handling. So there is no problem with using the limits with Kafka for CPU. But there is one thing to keep in mind. Most Kafka production clusters are required to deliver stable and reliable performance all day long. And that cannot rely on the limit which might or might not be available. So you should either request all the CPU you need or make sure that the requested CPU is sufficient for the baseline performance, the performance which you need to have at any point in time. That way, if the limit is available and gives you additional boost, it will be great, but the baseline will be guaranteed, so it will be not a problem if it is not there. With memory, it is a bit more complicated. Kafka is using memory for two different purposes. One part is used by the Java virtual machine. The other part is the operating system page cache, which Kafka relies on as well. A big part of the Java memory will be taken by the Java heap. But keep in mind that there is also other memory used by Java and by Kafka, which is not part of the heap. When configuring the memory requests and limits, you should make sure that at least all of the Java memory fits into the request. But since a big part of Kafka performance relies on the page cache, which caches the data written to the disk, you should at least consider requesting the memory for the page cache as well. Remember that in most cases you want stable and predictable performance from your production Kafka clusters and that's why requesting the cache memory as well makes a lot of sense. How do we configure the resources for Kafka? Of course, in the Kafka custom resource. In the Kafka part of the spec section in the custom resource, you can specify the request and limits in uh, exactly the same format as Kubernetes itself is using. In my case, I give each broker 16 gigs of memory and uh, four CPUs. And in addition, I let it use up to eight CPUs in bursts if uh, they are available. If you decide to use only requests, you can just set the request or you can set both to the same value. And uh, you can even configure only the limit and Kubernetes will use the value automatically for the requests as well. So now we have resources configured. But how do you define how much memory will be consumed by Java and how much will be left for the page cache? Whether the split will be like this or maybe like this? Well, you can configure a JVM and tell it what should be the initial and the maximum size of the Java heap. And the heap size will determine big part of the JVM memory as well. The initial heap size, of course, cannot be bigger than the maximum size. But you can set the initial and maximum heap size to the same value. That way, all of the memory will be allocated from the beginning and make things more predictable, which is what we want in production. In Strimzy, you can configure the XMS and XMX options directly in the Kafka CR. You can set them in the JVM options section. In my case here, I set both the XMS and XMX to the same value of 4 gigs of memory. If needed, you can configure here also some other JVM options. We talked a lot about Kafka, but configuring the resource requests and limits is important for all components. This includes, for example, the Zookeeper configuration, which I have here, 
or the configuration of the resources for the topic and user operators or for the other components like Kafka exports or who is control. And of course, it is also important for Kafka Connect or Mirror Maker. The main difference is that they do not rely so much on the page cache, so you do not need to configure the JVM options directly. You can just configure the container resources and let Java use all of it. So that is it about resources. If you hope that this episode will tell you exactly how much CPU or memory you should give to your cluster, you are now probably disappointed. But that depends on many different factors. For example, on how you use your Kafka cluster. Things such as throughput, number of consumers, producers, number of topics and partitions or message size play a big role. But it also depends on your infrastructure. Depending on where you run your Kubernetes cluster, the performance of the different parts such as network or storage might differ quite significantly. So there is no single answer to that. The numbers will be different for every Kafka cluster.